Roswell students, what's up? My name is James Barnett, and uh, some of us have met, some of us we haven't. Maybe I've met some of your siblings, but I, uh, I just want to say hello to you. I know that you're talking about what it means to love your neighbor right now. Uh, I'm the founder and executive director of a nonprofit called Neighborly. Uh, we were previously called Clothe Your Neighbor As Yourself. Uh, but through the years, over the past 10 years actually, the Lord has kind of just uh, directed me towards new passions, right? A passion not just to clothe my neighbor, to, but to feed my neighbor, to free my neighbor, to, to help heal my neighbor in all the ways that Jesus said that his followers would do if we followed him. And, um, and so I know you guys are learning so much right now about what it means to love your neighbor. And so I wanted to share a little bit with you about what we're doing. But before we do, I want to introduce you to my family, help you get to know me a little bit. My wife, I really married up. Isn't she beautiful? Oh my goodness. Her name is Kristen. And uh, we've been married for almost seven years. And uh, this is my son, Atlas. We took this in Iceland. It's just like the cutest thing, isn't it? He's a little older than that now. In fact, like a year older than that. So he's like twice as big. But gosh, I just can't get over that cute little photograph. That's my son, Atlas. Uh, a real hipster baby name. But wait, there's more. I have another son, also a hipster baby name. His name is River. So that's my son, River. Now you know my family a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit about our organization. Um, so over the past 10 years, uh, we've done a lot of work and, and you guys have helped us, many of you have helped us do this. We've provided school uniforms to orphans and vulnerable children in Kenya, uh, Haiti, Uganda, Mexico, Nicaragua, a few other countries. Because kids can't go to school, uh, students just can't be students if they can't afford a uniform. And if a parent isn't able to provide food, you can imagine they're not spending their money on uniforms. So what we do is we step in to remove that barrier to education. And a lot of you guys have helped us do that. Um, so we provide that school uniform so that child can go to school. And that is through our Clothe Your Neighbor initiative. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing this year. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of other initiatives. The other one that is really near and dear to my heart is the, uh, is the Feed Your Neighbor initiative. We believe if you have more than you need, you don't, you don't build a, a higher fence, you build a longer table. And, uh, and certainly God has blessed so many of us. And, and what uh, we do now is every week we provide breakfast to day laborers. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's really actually close. Oh my gosh, what's that shopping center across the street from you guys? Uh, just up the road a little bit. I know you know it, uh, but there's a lot of day laborers that gather there. And, uh, and so what I do in my hometown is I bring breakfast to these guys and gals because a lot of them are homeless. And when I was, I, some of you know my story, I was homeless for a little while by choice to, to join people in the margins and to love people who felt unloved and unwanted. And uh, during that time, I noticed a lot of my friends were getting up early, trying to work really hard to get out of poverty. And then the feeding programs that they relied on, didn't, they didn't serve until like eight or nine, but my friends are up at five or six trying to find work. And so, man, if anybody deserves a meal, it's those guys. And so, uh, and so that's what we're doing every week. We're feeding our neighbor as well as clothing our neighbor. We're also doing an initiative called Heal your neighbor. Bono from U2, one of my favorite rock stars ever, he said, where you live shouldn't determine whether you live. And that's the case. Um, and that's that's the struggle that I think a lot of people deal with. 26,000 children die every day because of hunger related diseases that we have the resources to prevent, you guys. Like, that's amazing. We can, we can knock that out. Like, as the church, we can do that. That's really exciting to me. And a, a large part of those deaths come from uh, intestinal parasites that if you just provide a tiny little pill every I think four months actually we can eradicate those parasites gained through unsafe drinking water so that's that's our heal your neighbor initiative we also have an initiative to welcome your neighbor Jesus said that when you welcome the foreigner you welcomed me so how we feel about the outsider whatever our perspective is on refugees or immigrants how we treat them is how much we love Jesus. That's the degree by which we love Jesus. That's what he taught us. And so what we wanna do is welcome people, welcome 
our neighbor. And so what we're doing is teaching English to hopefully by the end of the year, 100 immigrants and refugees. And then the last initiative that I, I wanna specifically invite you to be a part of is the Write Your Neighbor initiative. Mother Teresa said the most terrible poverty of all is loneliness and the feeling of being unloved. Here's the reality, the COVID-19 virus has isolated and quarantined the elderly population who is already feeling isolated and quarantined. And so people who uh, really relied on friendship and family who was visiting them or uh, just engagement from the outside world, people who really relied on that no longer have that. And it is so important that we serve this community. And here's why. I want to read you one of my favorite scriptures. It's from Romans 12, 10 through 13. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Contribute to the needs of the saints. And so what I'm inviting you guys to do, and, and so many people actually from around the nation and world, I and mean, we're getting letters from Tokyo, we're getting letters from California, and so many letters from Atlanta. I love that. Um, I'm in Florida. And so what we've done is we've partnered, our organization, Neighborly, we've partnered with uh, assisted living communities uh, to identify the um, least engaged seniors, the, the ones who don't have any family calling them, people who are just kind of stuck alone in the room with nothing to do. And and so we're just going to snail mail squat it. You know, we're just going to gather a bunch of people from around the world uh, who are willing to sit down with a pen and paper. It could be a short letter. Uh, this is actually, her name is Lindsay Dyshawn from Cumming, Georgia. That's really close to your neck of the woods. Uh, Kelsey Hamilton from Costa Mesa, California. We got some more, uh, some Maryland, South Dakota here. We got people, like I said, from from all over um, Tallahassee, where I'm from, and it's so cool. So we got small letters, we got long letters, we got multiple pages, we got people just filling out an index card. So if you have a stamp, if you have a piece of paper, if you have an envelope, I would encourage you to join this initiative, to join the Snail Mail Squad. And uh, just jot down some scripture, write a story that maybe you've never told somebody else. Uh, talk about your favorite season. Uh, it doesn't really matter, uh, as long as it's encouraging. And so what we'll do is we'll, uh, out of a safety measure, precautionary measure, um, we want to be safe, right? We don't want to send a bunch of uh, vi virus covered letters into a nursing home. Obviously, that's a bad idea. So what we're doing is we're quarantining the letters for a week. The CDC, Center for Disease Control in Atlanta actually, um, says to, to do it for 24 hours. Well, we're doing it for a week. And um, and then we're sanitizing it all. And then the nursing homes that we're partnered with are also quarantining the letters for 48 hours. More information probably than you wanted to know. But I just want to let you know that uh, we're doing this in a safe way uh, to dignify and love the vulnerable around us. And so anyways, if you do send that, I'll look at your, uh, if you do send us one of these letters, um, I'll send you back um, a thank you with uh, one of our new stickers. I'm pretty amped about these. It says, another world is possible. And it's possible because you're in it. And so I just want to encourage you guys and pray for you as I close out here um, to, to love your neighbor. Jesus says the degree by which we love them is the degree to which we love him. And, and so it's really important that we open our eyes, right? We, we, you know, I think it's so tempting in church to, to fold your hands, to bow your head, and to close your eyes. Uh, but, and sometimes that's, that's needed. But a lot of times the Lord is calling you to open your hands, to get a pen and write, you know, and open your eyes to see your neighbor in the world and, uh, and, and, to, and to, to go out and to love them. So um, let's, let's pray. And uh, please, if you would, partner with our Write Your Neighbor initiative. Um, there's a lot of lonely people out there right now that need your love and need your words. Let's pray. Father, we love you. I pray for Roswell students. Uh, I pray for the city of Roswell. I pray for the city of Atlanta and, and the whole state of Georgia, our nation, and the world right now. We're all focused on this one thing, this virus. Uh, it's, it's keeping us all in our homes. 
disengaged from each other in many ways. And I think, Lord, you've given your church uh, creativity to go out there and to, to figure out how to love our neighbors while we are quarantined. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for us as a church to, um, to recapture that, that ancient spirit of the early church of compassion to the outsider. So um, give us faith to follow you and courage to follow you. And I, and, I, and I pray for and love these students dearly, God. Bless them and may your Holy Spirit come upon them and fill their hearts. In your precious name we pray. King Jesus, amen. Peace, you guys.